Hi, this is Beck. Sorry I can't be there, but just trying to put together a few thoughts for you. Uh, so I think it's really, really important that these days we understand the digital environment. There's so much activity online and nearly everyone knows about Twitter and they know about Facebook. But amongst young people, a lot of those conversations have moved away from that public space into the more private space of apps like WhatsApp and Snapchat, where they have private conversations with friends. So when I wrote this book, Raising Children in a Digital Age, in 2014, it was because I was coming across so many people from within the church, especially those working with youth and children, who found that they and parents had many questions about what children were really doing online and the kind of steps that should be taken. They wanted to move out of the fear zone of shut it all down, don't let anyone use it, to a more intelligent use for themselves and for the children they have the care of. And part of the reason this book is called Raising Children rather than Parenting is that although I have no children, I believe I and others are responsible for creating a positive environment for all, especially its most vulnerable users, particularly children. If we look at the headlines in the newspapers at the moment, we would think that digital technology was a complete disaster area. Children are addicted to screens, they're being abducted via Facebook, they're giving away all kinds of private information, they're running up bills, becoming couch potatoes, meeting strangers and sexting, bullying and trolling at every opportunity, chucking a bit of porn in there if they have a chance. So we could give up in despair, but research shows that in fact the media, as is common, has presented an overly negative picture. As every new form of technology has come in, we experience a moral panic, a feeling that it's all out of control and that something must be done, even if it's the wrong thing that we're doing. We need to look like we're doing something. We're the healthiest, wealthiest generation in history, but the most fearful. And we spend so much time comparing what is happening online with what we see in face-to-face -face communication without stopping to think that digital is an equally valid form of communication. It's just different and needs to be measured on its own terms. We didn't all used to chat to strangers on the tube before mobile phones came along. And when we do engage, we need to understand that we have a lot of choice in the matter. Technology has made lots of new things possible, including me participating in this event, even though I can't get there in person but it doesn't have to make them inevitable. We're not subject to what is known as technological determinism. Uh, the machine made me do it. We are the ones that press the button. We need to spend the time online looking at the different kinds of platforms available and what each is capable of. So for example, Facebook, Facebook could be seen as sitting down in the pub with friends and then their friends might join in the chat Twitter is more like taking a megaphone out into the public space and someone picking up on a couple of words and thinking, oh, I'll join in that conversation. And there's lots of other platforms in regular use, including Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Spotify, Google+, Reddit, Vine, Snapchat, WhatsApp, and Yuck. But don't be overwhelmed. If you can understand any of them, you're moving forward. And we need to understand that children are not necessarily the fabled digital natives that we hear about. They don't come out of the womb understanding how to engage online. Having the technology around may mean there's less fear in the same way as if you put a two-year-old on a ski slope, they don't have as much fear. But their understanding is not out of our reach. We can learn to engage in that. It's all learned behaviour. Um, and we can use a much better theory than the notion of digital natives. Uh, if we look at the idea of digital residents and digital visitors, residents being people who are comfortable online and visitors people who pop in and do what they have to, which is more about attitude rather than age to understand online engagement. With children, as with any other space for learning, communication is key, ensuring that opportunities are taken to discuss newspaper reports, think about how you might do things differently, ensuring that you're not taking an overly negative view and within groups coming to an internet safety agreement so that there's some kind of parity amongst the people in that group. We can't rely on technology to protect our children. It can take measures, it can help us, it can give us new data um, and social platforms are being encouraged to look at how they use this material. But so far, computers and their algorithms written by human beings are not better than human beings at doing this kind of filtering work.
If you're going to use monitoring and filtering software, ensure you do so with your child's knowledge and use it as a base for conversation, otherwise a breakdown of trust is going to be coming forward. And encourage children to think about what values they stand for, what self do they want to represent online. Think about everything that you post online. Think about, are you happy for God to see it? Are you happy for your parents to see it? Are you happy for any kids that you engage with to see it? Do you mind seeing it on the front page of a newspaper? Even in five years' time, will you stand behind what you said? And can your worst enemy do anything with that information that you press send on? We really, really need to remember there's a human being at the other end of the keyboard. Uh, we, not, we need to not kind of make the screen an excuse for everything that's known as disinhibition where we've forgotten about the humanity of the person on the other side every person online is a human being uniquely created by god who seem who we want to reach out to think about what our friendships look like online how do we deal with an increase in speed and viciousness in bullying attacks online how do we ensure that support structures are in place whether those are online or offline how do we make sure we're available to answer questions that make it clear what your boundaries are in conversation and response times? Recognise that stranger danger is incredibly rare and that technology can help those uh, find those who've been abducted. But understanding the clues in changing behaviour and all sorts that indicates children are doing something unusual is key. Mobile technology at a younger age means a whole new set of discussions, rules and etiquette. And then the more that these can be agreed by groups of youth groups, ch schools and churches, the easier it is for parents and sometimes the kids themselves to manage their online interaction. We need to understand that the laws of the land still apply and that those who are the most vulnerable offline are quite often even more vulnerable online. There's lots to think about and lots to discuss, but please, please, please focus on the opportunities rather than just the negatives that the media would have us believe is all that exists. Bye.